everyone, welcome to part 10 of the Haunt Insider. Um, it's very cool for me to just even say that because, um, you know, when I started this I had no idea if you guys were going to dig it or not. Um, and, you know, you guys leaving good comments, feedback, thumbs up, uh, pointing out really cool haunts to me that I didn't know about for future episodes. Um, thank you all very much. I think we have somewhere around 850 to 900 views just on, you know, the first nine episodes of this. Um, which, you know, is, is fantastic. It's more than I really expected. Um, so here is to 10, 20, 50 more, you know, as long as you guys are enjoying them and uh, I uh, still have eyeballs and can look at videos on YouTube. This episode is going to be a special one. Um, I wanted to do sort of a thank you to three haunts and haunters that really have inspired me uh, over the last years and given me, um, you know, more than just uh, ideas, but actual props themselves. Um, I uh, know that you're probably going to recognize, you know, pro probably all three of these haunts and haunters, um, but it's not really the point of, you know, necessarily trying to get them more views or anything, but more of, like I said, as a thank you, and I'm sure, you know, some of you maybe have never heard of them, or possibly just you know, haven't been to their uh, YouTube channels or websites in a while. So, um, let's get started on the first haunt. I first came across this haunter back in early 2010. Um, I stumbled across his blog and I found this uh, crazy plethora of these tutorials on these really unique ghosts uh, that he made. Um, sort of a mixture of like a flying crank ghost and a marionette puppet. Um, they ran on deer motors and uh, windshield wiper motors. And I was just really impressed. Um, he is uh, Johnny's Ghost. And his uh, blog is johnnysghost.blogspot.com. Um, uh, I sent him an email, and I asked him, you know, hey, have you ever thought about selling any of your ghosts? At that time, I still had my uh, prop company going. It was sort of towards the tail end of its life, but, you know, I still had it in the back of my mind of maybe trying to find some new artists and, you know, just more people to help, you know, create pro props for the company. Um, but I approached him more as in, you know, I'm, I'm looking maybe to just to purchase one of your props um, and seeing, you know, kind of feel him out and see where he was at on it. He said, you know, he hasn't sold any, um, but he would, you know, not be against the idea of it. So after a little bit of talking, you know, he decided that he would make me a, a, a ghost. The one he I had ordered to make was a, a Lear ghost, one that was hanging down from the ceiling. Um, sort of looked like it was coming out of the ceiling, reaching down. And, um... I'll show you a little uh, clip of that ghost right now. This was uh, the first video that I ever saw um, of the Lear ghost. And um, obviously, you know, it was something I'd never seen before, especially from someone that built it, at, you know, as a homemade prop. Um, so it definitely drew my attention and I, uh, I kind of had to have one as, as soon as I saw it. About a month, month and a half had passed after we initially had talked and we sent a few emails back and forth here and there, but um, it was getting closer to Halloween, and I was sort of wondering, you know, when exactly he'd be finished with the prop, and when could I expect it. Um, and through uh, the last few emails, basically he had uh, decided that he was going to finish my Lear Ghost, and uh, he had done a few other touch-ups on some of his props, and then he was going to, unfortunately, call it quits. Um, he had decided that... Uh, in his current position in life, that he was just not into the same uh, aspects of Halloween as he was before, and he wanted to take a different route. Um, so I, I was, a, you know, a little shocked, and I was like, "Oh, well, that that's not that great of news." Um, you know, thanks for finishing mine, I guess. But uh, uh, a few days later, um, I had gotten uh, information that he was getting rid of a lot of his props through. I think it was a haunt forum and I had gone on and, and checked and uh, I, I sent him an email saying I, I didn't realize you know you were meaning you were you were done done with Halloween as in you just you, you didn't want to even have a single prop left and he said yeah I, I'm just clearing everything out um, by the way if, if you're interested in anything else you know let me know and I don't know something in my head had clicked um, I had seen about a year or so before someone had decided to shut down their haunt um, and, you know, do something else different with their life, and uh, somebody happened to acquire it, and I, that was just the first thing that came to my mind, is like, wow, I 
I kind of have the opportunity to maybe acquire someone's entire, you know, haunt. So I um, asked him if we could talk over the phone, um, got his number, and we had a few long conversations and basically came to an agreement that, uh, luckily for, for me and for him, he was uh, living in northern Florida. Um, so it was about a six-hour ride or so, and he said that um, if I was interested, I could, you know, take the, you know, the whole haunt minus one or two little things that, you know, uh, he wanted to keep for, for whatever reason. And um, he would drive it down and deliver it to my house. Um, by this point, we were five days out from Halloween, I want to say. Um, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm having an, someone's entire haunt, all their props dropped off my house. I'm trying to plan mine. Am I going to be able to work any of these in? You know, I was it was it was a shock and it was amazing. Um, but he came down. Uh, this was, you know, five days before Halloween in 2010, and um, dropped everything off. Uh, you know, said explained some things to me, taught me you know a few things of how to do repairs on some of them. Um, you know what what voltage and wiring they had, and I had a few uh, bare bones like carcasses that he sort of gave me of some props he was already, you know already working on, and said you know there you go man let me know how things go and, and you know and bye peace, and uh, in 2010 I was really only able to get out uh, one prop I was able to get out the ghost reader prop um, just because I couldn't fit everything else into the display that I'd already you know built. Um, but uh, last year was supposed to be, in 2011, was supposed to be like the grand, you know, unveiling of all these new ghosts um, that he had built. And I got m uh, quite a few of them out, and I had finished one of the um, bare bones ones that was just like a skeleton um, of a ghost. I did vlogs of, of building that one, putting that one together as well. Um, and I did some repairs, and basically I, I kind of reworked um, this internal flying crank ghost, um, which I'll show you a clip of right now of where it's stored and that I need to do some repairs on that. Um, so here's that. This is the uh, internal flying crank ghost that I had reworked um, back last year. He was much more round. His body went out a lot farther. I sort of took a lot of the, uh, I took all the cloth off and then I took a bunch of the uh, chicken wire that was underneath and just sort of round, you know, made his back a little more smooth and his shoulders a lot smaller. Um, he fell down, he needs to be repaired right in this area, a lot of the cheesecloth came off and his uh, cord snapped and it's just sort of loosely tied up there. Um, and then my uh, two Lear ghosts are stored in this closet as well. This front one was his, uh, John's original one, um, has a lot more detailed rib cage, um, a lot more depth to it. And then mine back there uh, was the one he made for me. It was a little bit thinner um, because the amount of time he spent on this rib cage, he said it would have just taken even longer, and I wouldn't have had it before Halloween um, from when I originally had ordered it. Uh, in this acquirement of Halloween stuff from him was you know everything that you'd imagine in, in normal you know haunts: black lights, um, skulls, misters, fog machines. You know, on top of all these really amazing, uh, you know, handmade animated ghosts that he had done. Um, it was one of those, you know, things where I was so impressed by his work at first and was hoping to maybe work with him, you know, through my prop company. Um, but, you know, it was sad to see that haunt die in, in the sense of being Johnny's ghost haunt, but I was very proud to kind of take it over and uh, keep his props going on. Um, please go check out johnnysghost.blogspot.com. Um, it's no longer an active blog, um, but as far as I know, he had planned on keeping it up for, you know, there was no time he planned on taking it down. Um, so go check it out while it's still up. There's some video clips that I also have on my channel um, from quite a while ago that you can check out. Um, there, Like I said, the tutorials on how to build um, the ghosts are basically all there. They're very detailed, um, and there's a lot of information you can take from those and just to sort of design and put towards all different types of props. Like you can take his me uh, mechanisms and mechanics and flip them in all different decor or decorations, <laughs> directions, um, and just kind of really go wild with it. So, thank you, Johnny's Ghost, uh, John, for you know passing on your haunt to me, and. Um, 
let's move on to number deuce haunt. This next haunt I'm going to take a guess and say that most of you have probably heard of. They've been around for a while. Um, they've won quite a few awards for uh, scariest uh, home haunt in the nation. They have tons of videos on their YouTube channel. They have a great website. They sell a lot of their props um, and animatronics that they make. And they even do uh, haunted attraction trade shows now. It is the DC Cemetery. When I first came across them in 2009, I had never seen anything like it for a home haunt. I thought it was a professional haunt until I realized that in the background there was someone's home, you know. Um, they have so many just fantastic pneumatic and uh, animated props in really well put together scenes. Um, I was more than impressed just by the fact that the, it was all like a show. You know, it, it wasn't, you just kind of walked up and maybe a prop went off here and you had to kind of wave your hands or something like that. They had a full, you know, guy telling a story that was the entrance to it. <clears throat> you could go in, certain years they've, they've had it where they had a mausoleum where you walked through and it was more like an actual haunted house. Um, but it just, it all had different little stories and stuff going on with it. Um, the, my favorite prop would probably have to be their greeter. Um, he's super tall, he's just amazing looking, and that's the little clip I'm going to show you right now. This prop is super tall, has just amazing facial features, it blinks, its eyes move, it moves its arms and points, and it starts in a seated position and then stands up, and now it's sitting back down. Um, just so amazing when I first saw that prop. One of the uh, highlights of when I had my uh, Halloween prop company was a website called FrightTheater.com. Um, had purchased a bunch of our Peppers Ghost DVDs to sell on their website. And um, Fright Theater had done uh, business with DC Cemetery in different ways, and they uh, had some of their stuff, DC Cemetery stuff, for sale on their website. Um, Fright Theater didn't, at the time, didn't really have a lot of products for sale, and to think that um, my DVDs were related to anything to do with DC Cemetery, um, you know, sitting next to them in the same, you know, web store, was was amazing. That was such a thrill for me. DC Cemetery's YouTube page only has like about 170 subscribers. Um, to me that's just wrong. I should not have more subscribers than they do. So definitely go subscribe to their page right now. Um, there's a bunch of videos on uh, all the different props they made, sort of the internals on them, uh, pieces that they sell, like components of props, um, and obviously haunt videos. They did not do the haunt in 2010. They took that year off to work on props, work on their company, and design for 2011. Um, and there is no official video up for 2011 either. They've always se seemed to be a little sporadic on when they've taken the time to put together, you know, the, their nice videos, which all their videos of their haunt are fantastically shot and great music. Um, so hopefully coming soon there'll be a video for 2011's haunt. Um, right now, a lot of the newer ones that they put up uh, towards the middle to late 2011 were um, newer props that they were working on for sale, like at conventions and stuff. Um, their website is dccemetery.com. Um, a lot of the same stuff that's on the YouTube channel in the sense of, you know, props that they have made. Um, you can actually buy the stuff off of their website. And um, it has a little section of you know, what days their haunt was is open, um, like a little calendar. Um, so go check them out. For any reason, if you've never heard of them or seen them, it's your duty um, to go do that. I mean, they have some of the best pneumatic props for a home haunt, for a pro haunt, for whatever um, that I've ever seen. Um, they just sort of cover the gamut on all the different types. So go do that now, or... You're not a true haunter. No, whatever. But go this do it last now. haunt I found back in 2007, I believe it was when I was just doing what I'm doing now, just sort of scavenging YouTube for haunt videos, and I came across this little display with no animated props, you know, all just handmade static props, and it was mainly a slideshow video, and from, uh, I don't know, the third or fourth image, I knew I had found, like, my new favorite home haunt. Um... I had never seen anything made out of paper mache that looked like what he makes. Um, I am talking about pumpkin rods. Probably not a big surprise if you know me um, and props that I have. Um, 
first, I'm going to show you uh, a little clip of my uh, Groundbreaker Zombies that I have from him that uh, adorned my house now. Definitely became pretty infatuated with his uh, Groundbreaker Zombies. Um, and in 2008, this was the first piece I ever acquired from him. Um, it's cool to see over the years the detail and the um, little bits and pieces that get added to uh, the zombies, just kind of watching them progress. And in 2009, I got the um, Rotten Hill prop, which is stored at my parents' house. And in 2010, I got this zombie, which was right at the start of when he started putting eyeballs in some of his props. And this one's supposed to be like a leper uh, wrapped in bandages and, and all nasty and rotting. And then 2011, I got this one, which I, I kind of figures a female. She has like a shawl uh, or a shroud on. And this one over here was the other one I got in 2011. You know, just, just so much detail and, and little wrinkles and depth added to all the, the bits of skin and flesh. And if you uh, haven't seen or you want to see some footage of the Rotten Hill prop that I mentioned, if you look at the 2000 Haunt video of, of my haunt, uh, it's the guy that has like the tube going into his mouth and he has sort of like a collar um, behind his head. Um, I first, uh, like I said, first found the 2007 Haunt video and that year had quite a few of these it looks like ghosts with skulls, skull heads coming up out of the ground. Um, he is so good at capturing movement in something that's not moving. Um, I believe years ago he had made a comment, you know, along those lines, saying something like, I, I want my props to sort of look like they had either been, you know, captured in mid-move or, you know, it looked like they could have been reaching out to grab something and it, and it just sort of time froze. Um, and I... 100% agree that, you know, he does that with basically every prop he makes. Um, they have great expressions, they can, you know, look like they're in agony. Um, I, I, that's one of probably the reasons why I really fell in love with just with the props is because of how detailed in emotion, how much emotion it looks like the props even had. Um, this uh, little clip is of some of the uh, props from the 2007 haunt that uh, got me so addicted to uh, Rot and all his stuff. The twisted and bent angles of the ghosts coming out of the ground is definitely what it really drew me to this video in particular. They're just absolutely fantastic. Over the years, Rot has also made many um, props, mainly groundbreakers and some smaller things for sale on his website. Um, over the last couple years, it's, he's sort of slowed down and not put as many up for sale. Um, so I am very grateful for all the props that I do have from him. Um, the uh, Rotten Hill prop was uh, came about of my love for Silent Hill, and I had you know this this wanton idea to create you know a prop from it, and I thought you know no better person than than Rot to sort of take my ideas from it and build it into his own thing, um, which is what he did, and and by far that is still my favorite prop, and I get probably the most comments of that one piece over anything in the entire yard, no matter, you know, how big the display is, what year it is. Um, he also does a, uh, a scarecrow each year. There's a competition in his town that he um, has put up a scarecrow in it. Um, he's never won first place, but um, it's really fun every year to see uh, all the different, you know, other types of scarecrows, the more friendly ones, and then his creepy, demented one, you know, standing next to In 2010 to them. and 11, he sort of took the focus off of his home haunt, and um, he still did a display there each year, but they were more simplified and didn't really feature any new props specifically for the haunt. In 2010, he, um, throughout the year, built new props and shot little scenes set up all around his town and his area, um, some of the scenes had just, you know, one prop in it, others had multiple, but the idea was they were all individual and unique, um, you know, photographs and, and film, and then at the end of the year, uh, at the end of the 2010 Haunts season, he compiled them all together to create one, you know, complete video. It was fantastic, it was a really great surprise. Um, that was also the year he started the, um, uh, Pumpkin Rot Teenies, which were these, basically, um, sort of, ki little kids, 
Um, some of them seem to be like they could be evil little trick-or-treaters, and um, each one is based off of a letter in the alphabet, and he's slowly going through all the letters of the alphabet, creating one for each. Um, in 2011, uh, he went even farther and made a full movie um, called Swamp Photos, and it came out fantastic. At the very end, when the uh, camera is panning back, the uh, props that are basically uh, staked on into the ground on these poles are, are absolutely amazing. He sort of reached a new level for even himself. His website, uh, pumpkinrod.com, is absolutely um, a treasure trove of Halloween goodness. Um, he has the most consistent um, blog of Halloween content, horror content, of anyone I, I can find. Um, he posts multiple things a day. He's been doing it for years now. Um, his site also has, he's been doing these little comics recently um, called Begging for Candy, and they're actually really hilarious. He draws them all himself, and they're based on these two little trick-or-treaters that are going around um, on Halloween night and just the things they're seeing and, and thinking about. Um, Rot uh, said a while back that he is working on a book and that someday would like to put it out, and I am definitely looking forward to that as well. Um, I'd like to consider Rot as a, a friend of mine, at least an acquaintance. Um, I try to, you know, keep in touch with him um, through emails. Back when I started my um, prop company, I, you know, wanted advice and I, I had some ideas for things to work on, and I just, you know, wanted, you know, to ask somebody that, you know, is really into Halloween what they kind of thought and, you know, where I should go, and um, he was very helpful and gave me some ideas and sort of helped guide me um, to focus on, you know, one certain, you know, thing or, or not another thing. So I'm very appreciative of that as well. Um, if you've checked out his site before or his YouTube channel, um, but you don't check it frequently, there's, like I said, there's always new stuff on there. Um, his YouTube channel also is filled with just a, a lot of videos that um, he enjoys that are, are creepy and spooky mixed in with all his haunt and prop videos as well. So, um, you might be overdue for checking out his site and then finding something really cool. I know I always find something new when I go to his blog. Um, again, all three of these haunts, they mean very, very much to me. Um, Rot, uh, thank you very much and for being probably my favorite, you know, um, yard haunter and prop maker. Um, and hope for many more years to come of seeing your haunt, definitely. Um, guys, thank you for watching. This uh, episode means a lot, and it means a lot that you guys watch it and watch me. Um, I ain't anything special, but I like uh, you know like to think that I'm helping out some other haunters and you know giving you guys something cool to watch as well. So uh, here's to many, many more. Peace out. Thank you.